Welcome to TeachMeAll.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to change the front brake pads and rotors on this 2007 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 4x4. That's right. Now we're going to review with you the tools we'll be using for this jack, project. Two jack stands and two wheel chocks. Two new front brake rotors and new br front brake pads and hardware. Some DOT3 brake fluid. Some brake parts cleaner. Some high temperature caliper grease. Some anti-seize lubricant. Thread lock. Hose clamp pliers. A disc brake spreader, a large C-clamp, a 22 millimeter socket and ratchet for the lug nuts, with a 19 millimeter socket for the guide pins, 18 millimeter socket to remove the caliper mounting bracket bolts, and a 5-8 sockets for our bolts that we use to remove the rotor. 10 millimeter box in wrench for the bleeder screw, a 19 millimeter thin wrench to hold the guide pin nut, a T30 torque socket, a torque wrench, a bungee cord, a brake bleeder kit, some safety goggles, a shop light, and some shop towels. Then we set our emergency brake. Put our wheel chocks behind both rear tires. Then we're going to use our 20 millimeter socket and ratchet to loosen up the lug nuts. We turn them about a quarter to half a turn. Then we're going to raise the vehicle off the ground using our jack. And always refer to your owner's manual for proper jacking positions. And we put our jack stands into position and never crawl under a vehicle that's only supported by a jack. Once we have our jack stands in position, pour our vehicle onto the jack stands. Now we're finished removing the lug nuts. We'll slide the tire off the vehicle, put our lug nuts onto the rim to keep them in safe keeping, and then we'll slide the tire up under the vehicle. This is for convenience and for safety. We move to the other side and do the exact same thing. We're starting on the passenger side, so we turn the wheels to the driver's side so we can access the back of the caliper easier. Now we're going to go over the locations of the bolts we'll be referring to during this project. This is the upper caliper guide pin bolt. This requires a 19 millimeter socket. This is the position of the lower caliper guide pin bolt. This is the bleeder screw with the dust cover. This is the upper caliper mounting bracket bolt with a, requires an 18 millimeter socket and here's the lower caliper mounting bracket bolt. Then we're going to start by using our hose clamp pliers and clamping the brake line, remove our dust cover, install our 10 millimeter box in wrench and our bleeder kit. Now we open up the bleeder screw and using our large C clamp we'll compress the piston inside the caliper. This will allow us to remove the caliper from the brake pads and the rotor.
Since this caliper has two pistons, make sure you move your C-clamp between the pistons alternating from one piston to the next. Then we're going to tighten up our bleeder screw, remove our brake bleeder kit, remove our wrench, and reinstall our dust cover. And then we're going to remove the caliper guide pin bolt, starting by loosening the top one using our 19mm socket and ratchet and our 19mm thin wrench to hold the caliper guide pin nut. Then we move to the bottom, loosen it up. Now we're able here to remove it by hand. So we go ahead and remove the lower bolt. And remove the upper bolt. Once the upper bolt's removed, we'll try to remove the caliper from the rotors and the brake pads. Here we're, we can't quite get it, so we're going to use a screwdriver to get up under the caliper, between the caliper and the rotor, and make sure you don't bend your brake hardware. Then we slide it off and we'll tie it up using our bungee cord and get it out of the way. Now we're going to remove our brake pads using a small screwdriver. With this brake pad's removed, and now we're going to remove our caliper mounting bracket. Moving the caliper mounting bracket requires a 18 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Remove the top bolt. And now we remove the bottom bolt. And we slide the caliper mounting bracket off. Now we're going to use our T30 torque socket to remove our rotor retaining screw. This is the position of the two holes in our rotor that we'll thread our bolts into to press the rotor off. We'll begin by threading the bolts in by hand. And we'll tighten them up using a 5-8 socket and ratchet. And remember to alternate from side to side. This will help push the rotor off evenly. Now we'll remove our old rotor and get ready to install our new rotor. Make sure the hole for the rotor retaining screw lines up properly when installing the new rotor. Slide the new rotor on. Insert your rotor retaining screw and tighten it up using your T30 torque socket. Now we're going to clean off the new rotor using a brake parts cleaner and a new rag. Clean off the front and the back. Now we'll get ready to remount our caliper mounting bracket. We'll pull out our caliper guide pin bolts, wipe them off, and we'll lubricate them using some anti-seize lubricant. Reinstall them. Make sure they seat properly. And make sure they move freely inside the caliper mounting bracket. Now we're going to replace our old brake hardware with our new. Match them up, make sure that's the correct hardware. Slide into place. If you don't have new hardware with your new brake um, pads, you can clean the old hardware and reuse it. But since we got new hardware, we're going to go ahead and use it.
Then we're going to pl apply a little um, thread locker to our caliper mounting bracket bolts. Slide our caliper mounting bracket into place. Insert our bolts. We'll tighten our bolts by hand and then we'll use our 18 millimeter socket and ratchet. And finally we'll torque our caliper mounting bracket bolts to 129 foot-pounds unless otherwise specified. Then we're going to apply a little anti-seize lubricant to the area where the pad slides in the hardware. Make sure you move any of this anti-seize lubricant from the surface of the rotor. Then we slide our new pad into place. And we'll apply the high temperature caliper grease to the back of both pads. Then we'll get ready to reinstall our caliper. Remove it from the bungee cord that we've been using to tie it up with. And we're going to finish compressing the two pistons inside the caliper. Remove our bleeder screw cover. Install our wrench. Install our brake bleeder kit. Open up the bleeder screw. Using our disc brake spreader and an old pad, we're going to compress the pistons until they're flush within the caliper. We need to alternate using our disc brake spreader between both of the pistons. Once the pistons are fully compressed, we'll remove our disc brake spreader, remove our old pad. We'll tighten up our bleeder screw, remove the brake bleeder kit, remove our wrench, reinstall our dust cover, and slide the caliper into position. We're going to apply a little thread lock to our caliper guide pin bolts. Put our bolts in position. Tie them up by hand. Tie them up using our 19 millimeter socket and ratchet. Then using our thin wrench and our torque wrench, we're going to torque them to 74 foot-pounds, unless otherwise specified. Make sure you do it on the top and the bottom. Now we're done with this side, so we're going to remove our hose clamp pliers, go to the driver's side, turn our wheels to the passenger side, Clamp the brake line with our hose clamp pliers. Remove our dust cover from the bleeder screw. Install our box in wrench. Our bleeder kit, open up the bleeder screw. Using our large C clamp, we're going to compress the pistons within the caliper. Remember to move this from 
one piston to the other. Then we'll tighten up a bleeder screw, move our brake bleeder kit, move our wrench, and reinstall our dust cover. Now we're going to loosen up our caliper guide pin bolts using our 19 millimeter socket and ratchet and our 19 millimeter thin wrench on the top and the bottom. Once we remove the bolts, we remove our caliper. If you can't get it by hand, we'll use a small standard screwdriver. Careful to bend your mounting hardware if you're going to reuse it. Then we're going to tie up our caliper out of the way using our bungee cord. Move our brake pads. Then we're going to remove our caliper mounting bracket using our 18 millimeter socket and ratchet. With both bolts removed, we'll slide our caliper mounting bracket off. Using our T30 Torx socket, we're going to remove our rotor retaining screw. And here we didn't have to press the rotor off, it came off, but we're going to put our new one on. We need to make sure that the rotor retaining screw holes line up. Slide the new rotor into place. Reinstall our rotor retaining screw. Clean off our new rotor with our brake parts cleaner and a clean rag. On the front and the back. Now we're going to get ready to reinstall our caliper mounting bracket and we pull out the caliper guide pin bolts, clean off the old grease, and lubricate them with our anti-seize lubricant. Slide them into position, make sure they seat properly and move freely. And then we're going to install our new hardware. Matching it up with the old hardware. We're going to apply a little thread lock to our caliper mounting bracket bolts. Slide our caliper mounting bracket into place. Insert our bolts. Tighten them up using our 18 millimeter socket and ratchet. Then we're going to torque them to 129 foot pounds unless otherwise specified. Then we're going to go ahead and grease our slides with some anti-seize lubricant. Slide our pads into place. and coat the back of the pads with some high temperature caliper grease. Then 
Now we're getting ready to reinstall our caliper, remove it from the bungee cord, remove the dust cover, install our box in wrench, install our brake bleeder kit, open up the bleeder screw, and using an old bake an old brake pad and our this brake spreader will compress the pistons inside the caliper until they're flush. Remember to alternate from one piston to the other. Once the pistons are flush, we'll remove our disc brake spreader and our old brake pad. Remove our brake bleeder kit. Make sure you tighten up the bleeder screw first. Remove our wrench and reinstall the dust cover. We're going to slide our caliper into place. Apply some Loctite to the caliper guide pin bolts. Slide our caliper guide pin bolts into place, tighten them by hand, and tighten them up using our 19mm socket and ratchet and 19mm thin wrench. And we're going to torque them to 74 foot pounds unless otherwise specified. Now we remove our hose clamp pliers and get ready to bleed the brakes. We'll open up the hood and make sure we have enough fluid in the master cylinder. Just make sure it's at the max line. If not, you'll need to add some. Then we're going to start on the passenger side, which is farthest from the master cylinder. So we turn the wheels to the driver's side, remove our dust cover, install our wrench, install our bleeder kit. Have your partner depress the brake pedal and hold it down. We open up the bleeder screw, let the fluid go through the line of the brake bleeder kit. Once the pedal is all the way to the floorboard, we'll close the bleeder screw, have your partner release the brake pedal, and have him mash it again. Open up the bleeder screw, make sure there are no bubbles in the brake line. Close the bleeder screw, never Leave the bleeder screw open and have your and release the brake pedal. This can introduce air into your brake system. Here you can see there are still air bubbles in the brake line, so we're going to continue bleeding. Now the bubbles have been removed from the brake system. We'll tighten up the bleeder screw, have your partner release the brake pedal. And we're going to move to the other side, remove our brake bleeder kit, remove our wrench, reinstall our dust cover. Then we're going to check our master cylinder and make sure there's plenty of fluid in it. Add until it gets to the max line. We're going to turn our wheels to the passenger side, remove our dust cover, install our 10 millimeter box in wrench, install our brake bleeder kit, have your partner depress the brake pedal, open up the bleeder screw, allow the fluid to come through the line and watch for air bubbles. As you can see here, we have several air bubbles in the system, so we close the bleeder screw, have your partner release the brake pedal and mash it again and hold it down and keep repeating this process until there's no more air bubbles in the line of the bleeder kit. Now we close the bleeder screw 
Have your partner release the brake pedal. Depress it again. Open up the bleeder screw. And once you're satisfied there's no more bubbles in the brake line, close the bleeder screw, release the brake pedal, remove the brake bleeder kit, remove your wrench, reinstall your dust cover, straighten up your wheels, and reinstall your tires. Put your lug nuts on and snug them down using our 20 millimeter socket and ratchet. Move to the other side, install the wheel, install the lug nuts, snug them down. Once both front wheels are snugged, we're going to use the jack Edge up the vehicle, remove the jack stands, lower the vehicle back onto the ground, and we're going to torque the lug nuts to 140 foot pounds in a crisscross pattern. Remember to do this for both sides. Move the wheel chocks from behind both rear tires. And now this job is done. Well, we hope this video will help you change the brake pads and rotors in your 2007 Chevy Silverado 1500 4x4. Send any comments you may have to comments at teachmeall.com. And as always, thank you for visiting teachmeall.com and have a great day.